I hope you will be as amazed as I am when looking at this question. You're presented with three sets of diamonds. Each set contains numbers outside of the diamonds as well as inside the diamonds. Let's look at the first diamond. It has numbers 2, 4, 16, 22, and then there is a number in the middle, 44. The second set of diamonds contains numbers 3, 9, 81, 93, and 186 inside. And then the last set of diamonds has two numbers visible, which are 5 and 25, and three numbers missing. You need to select the missing three numbers out of four possible choices. Choice A, 495, 720, and 970. Choice B, 625, 655, and then 1310. Choice C, 780, 935, and 1935. And then the last but not least is choice D with 545, 610, and then 1000. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Typically you get between 20 and 30 seconds on a real test, so feel free to pause this video if you need more time. But on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you see a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Nothing new here with this question. And my advice to you as usual, always look for patterns. Let's look at the patterns here. If we number the corners of the diamonds as well as the middle with the letters of the English alphabet A, B, C, D, and E, we can build a pattern. And the pattern will be B is calculated as A multiplied by A, basically A squared. C is calculated as B multiplied by B. D is calculated as A plus B plus C. And then E is calculated as C multiplied by 2. Let's look at the example. If we look at the first set of diamonds, the number at the bottom of the diamond is 2. The number on the left is calculated as 2 multiplied by 2, which equals 4. The number on the upper side of the diamond is calculated as 4 multiplied by 4 and equals 16. Then the number on the right is calculated as 16 plus 4 plus 2 and equals 22. And then the number in the middle of the diamonds is calculated as 22 multiplied by 2 and equals 44. If you follow this logic and do this calculation, you will come up with the choice B. And choice B is represented by the numbers 625, 655, and 1310. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an unusual question, but we're starting to see it on the test more and more often. You need to select three numbers, which add up to 52. And there are eight choices to select three numbers. You have numbers 7, 24, 33, 5, 9, 11, 17, and number 12 presented for selection. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. See if you can pause this video to get to the correct solution. I am pretty sure you figured it out, but just in case, I am moving forward to get you to the correct answer. As you might have guessed, the correct numbers are 7, 33, and 12, because 7 plus 33 plus 12 equals 52. Keep in mind that this may not be the only solution. A lot of times, in questions like this, there are other options available. Do you see any other set of numbers that lead to the required result? If you found another possibility, please make sure to post in comments. Here is a very interesting problem that you might frequently get on the test. You need to determine the next item in the sequence. You're presented with the sequence of large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside, and small squares are of the different color. You need to determine next item in the sequence, and you have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe longer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead, move forward to get to the correct solution together.
As always, my advice to you, look for patterns. And determining the pattern is key to solving this particular problem. What you need to know to answer this particular question is that blue shape moves within the row of the larger shape. In each row, blue shape moves from left to right, one step at a time. And once blue shape reaches the end of the row on the right, it reappears on the left. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is an extremely tricky question, but I have full confidence that you'll be able to solve it. You are presented with the sequence of circles, which is also organized in a circle. Sequence starts with the red circle with the number 56 inside. Next circle has number 114. Following it, circle with the number 232. Then circle with the number 470. Then circle with the number 948. Then follows the circle with the number 1906. And then comes the circle with the missing number. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. What's interesting about this problem is that all circles have different colors. And some circles have the same size and other circles have different sizes. But regardless, you need to select one of the following four choices. Choice A, 3812. Choice B, 3824. Choice C, 3820. And then choice D, 3800. As I mentioned, this is a tricky problem, but regardless, I'm moving forward to reveal the final solution to you. And as usual, what I'm sharing is just my version of the solution, so feel free to share yours in comments. You might be tired of hearing me saying it all the time, but pattern is the key to solve this challenge. And different shape sizes and colors are introduced on the objects here in the picture just to confuse you. So let's look at the pattern. The pattern here is previous number plus the sequence number multiplied by 2. And you have to add previous number to the sequence before doing multiplication. So let's look at the simple calculations. The first number in the sequence is number 56. If we add 1 to 56, which is the sequence number, then multiplied by 2, 57 multiplied by 2 is 114. Let's do the same thing to number 114. 114 plus 2 multiplied by 2 equals 116 multiplied by 2, which is 232. So our final number, 1906 plus 6, which is the sequence number, multiplied by 2 equals 1912 multiplied by 2 which equals 3824. If you liked my version of the solution please make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is the cool question to test your analytical skills. You are presented with the sequence of squares. And each square box has triangles. First box has two triangles. Second box has four. Next one has six. One after that has ten and you need to determine number of triangles you should put in the box with the question mark. You have four different choices. Choice A, 10. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 14. And then choice D, 16. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video and look at these pictures closely. I am pretty sure you figured it out, but just in case, I am moving forward to share with you the final solution. As you might have guessed, to get to the correct answer, you need to look for patterns. And there are two patterns we see here on this picture. The first pattern is that each box contains triangles 
that are incremental increasing. Pattern 2 shows you how to calculate triangles. And to calculate triangles in the next box, the triangles in the previous two boxes should be summed up. For example, the actual calculations start with the square 3. And to get to the number of triangles in square 3, you need to add 2 triangles plus 4 triangles, which equals to 6. Based on this logic, to calculate number of triangles in the last box, you need to add 6 plus 10, which would be equal 16 triangles. So the correct answer here is choice D, 16 triangles. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I wanted to ask you for a favor. There are a lot of people that you might know that would benefit from this content. Would you be able to share this content with them? Unless of course you're driving, then you can do it right after you get off the car. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. I love this amazing question because it tests you on out-of-the-box thinking. You need to rearrange the glasses with water by only touching one glass. And you need to get from configuration 1 on the top to bottom configuration by only touching one glass. Take a close look to see how you can do it. I'm pretty sure you figured it out, but just in case, I am moving forward to share the solution with you. As I mentioned, you need to think out of the box. And the solution is to take the second glass from the left and pour the water into the second from the end empty glass container. Typical thinking to solve this problem is just to move the glasses. But out of the box thinking is pour the water from one glass to another. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know someone who is getting ready for the interview or assessment test, please share this video with them. This is going to help them pass and get hired for their dream job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is a rather unexpected question you might frequently see on the test. You need to determine during which period revenue declined and you're presented with the profit and loss chart that covers periods from 2018 to 2024. On the chart, you see three lines representing revenue expenses and taxes and you need to select the final answer out of four different choices choice a the period between 2018 and 2020 choice b the period between 2019 and 2020 choice c the period between 2020 and 2021 and choice d the period between 2023 and 2024 give yourself a little bit of time maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution I am pretty sure that by now you found it, but I am going to move forward and reveal you my version of the solution anyway. And if you know the better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The way I see it is that the revenue goes down between the period of 2020 and 2021, which is represented by the blue line. In 2020, the revenue was about 9.5 units, and then in 2021, it went down to approximately 8.5 units. All other highlighted periods in the question indicate revenue increases. Did you see it differently? Please make sure to post your answer in comments. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is a puzzling question which has a very surprising solution. You're presented with three circles. Each circle is broken into three equal parts. The first circle has numbers 8, 19 and 13. Second circle has numbers 11, 15 and 29. And then the third circle has numbers 33, 31 and then one number is missing. You need to calculate the missing number out of four different choices. Choice A, 16. Choice B, 17. Choice C, 18. And then choice D, 20. Did you calculate the right answer? As I mentioned, the solution to this problem is really interesting. 
So let's move forward to get to the correct solution together. You're probably tired hearing this and I'm tired repeating it, but you need to always look for patterns to solve these types of problems. And the pattern here is that section 3 of the circle is calculated as sections 1 plus 2 divided by 4. So to calculate the missing number, you need to add 33 plus 31 and then divide the sum by 4 and you will get to the result, which would be 16. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tricky question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now, here's the question for you to try. You're presented with total company spending, which is equal $800,000. And you need to calculate an approximate benefits expense. In addition to benefits on the chart, you also see payroll, research and development, as well as client entertainment amounts. You are presented with four different choices for which you need to do mental calculations. Choice A, 170,000. Choice B, 216,000. Choice C, 296,000. And choice D, 360,000. Do you see the answer? Please pause this video, do mental calculations, and post your answer in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. If you're trying to improve your English vocabulary, this question might be for you. You need to identify all synonyms to the word accountant. The choices presented to you are carpenter, mason, actuary, teacher, auditor, analyst, bookkeeper, engineer, controller, and treasurer. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video, because there could be between 1 and 10 answers. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and share with you my solution. But obviously, if you have a better one, please make sure to share in comments. I found five similar words. They are actuary, auditor, bookkeeper, controller, and treasurer. I believe these words are similar because they represent financial jobs in the organization. For example, actuary is a person who compiles and analyzes statistics to calculate risks for the organization. Auditor is the person who inspects companies' accounting and finance. Bookkeeper is a person whose job is to record financial affairs of the business. Controller is the person in charge of organization's finances to eliminate abuse and ensure systems of checks and balances. And finally, the treasurer is the person who is appointed to administer or manage financial assets and liabilities of the organization. Do you see any other words I might have missed? Please make sure to share in comments. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. One of the very hard challenges is forming the words using certain number of letters of the English alphabet. In this question, you are presented with 10 letters and you need to form the word using all the letters only once. The letters are N, V, A, O, I, T, and T, I, O, M. Do you see the word here? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 20 to 30 seconds. Hopefully you solved it, because I am moving forward and revealing the solution. As you might have guessed, the word is motivation. Let me spell it for you. M O T I V A T I O N. And the definition of the motivation is that motivation is a reason person acts or behaves in a particular way. It is also a process that initiates, guides, and maintains goal oriented behaviors. Believe it or not, but doing more practice exercises helps you get better with the skill of forming the word. For example, if you start with the bottom right corner, you can form the word motivation. You see M-O and then you swap T-I and then if you continue, you go V-A, T-I-O-N. You can solve these types of challenges better if you do more crosswords and puzzles. Here is the practice problem for you. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? You have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday. 
choice C, Friday, choice D, Saturday. Feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. I would like to give you a hint. The best way to solve these types of problems is using reverse calculations. So do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure out the answer? Make sure to post your answer as well as your rationale for solving this problem in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's an interesting question where you need to correctly count the number of squares on the picture. Take a close look and select from one of the following choices. Choice A – 7 squares. Choice B – 8 squares. Choice C – 9 squares. And choice C – 12 squares. Make sure to count inside and outside squares to get to the correct solution. Let me show you the final answer. I counted 7 squares in the picture. Obviously, if you have a different answer, please make sure to post your solution in comments. Here are all the squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Do you have a different number? I'm looking forward to your response if you counted more or less squares. Here is the question for you to practice your skills. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in comments so I can give you my feedback. You need to form the word using all the letters only once, and you're presented with nine letters. Letters are T, F, A, L, C, U, P, M, I. Do you see the word? This is not a trivial task because there are nine letters, but this is very frequently used word from the English alphabet. Hope you found the answer. Please make sure to post it in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is the frequent test problem where you need to determine the age of the family members. Today, a father is three times as old as his son. After 15 years, the father will be twice as old as his son. What is the father's present age? And you have four different choices. Choice A, 40 years. Choice B, 45 years. Choice C, 50 years. And choice D, 55 years. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. One of the ways to solve this problem is to take the number from the solution and see if it will work the math. But instead of doing that, we're going to build the expression and calculate the father's present age. In the first step, we're going to introduce two variables. Variable x will represent age of the son today, and variable y will represent father's age today. So our first formula is 3x equals y, which indicates that today father is three times older than his son. After 15 years, our expression will be different. The new expression will be y equals 2x plus 15. Because in both cases y is the same, we can build a new expression 3x equals 2x plus 15. Once we simplify, 3x minus 2x will equal 15. And after completing the calculations, x will be equal 15 and y will be equal 45. Based on this, today's age of the son is 15 years old which means that after 15 years, son will be 30 years old and father will be 60 years old. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar age problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.